Radar Update. My name is Daniel Vallis and welcome to our channel. Right now we are in a high watch period for the next few hours and the days ahead up through the 19th. There is high expectation. We've been studying for several months and even over a year now. The beautiful story that has been woven and building upon each other and growing and growing, particularly to where we are right now and the few days ahead. So we have this summarized on our Heavens Declare sheet in our Google Drive, so definitely download that for a reference. We have the midpoint of the Star of Bethlehem's pointing to where we are right now on the 17th, but again it is plus or minus a day. We don't know exactly where it is in your time zone. It's going to be different number-wise anyway. And like the pattern of Esther that we looked at and is in our Exodus 2 booklet, she prepared and purified herself for a year and then she went to the king. So we don't know how much of a delay is going to be between this anniversary mark, but we see that there aren't that many options left for the fulfillment of this Shiloh prophecy, which ties together all these pictures we've seen. And the celestial story that we see right now is the picture of Shiloh, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, coming to pick up his redeemed, his bride. The call has already gone out, behold the bridegroom cometh, now go ye out to meet him. So we know he's around here somewhere, and we are at a halfway point right now that we've even been pointed to by signs in the past and celestial signs in the past tied with patterns and shadows from Scripture 2 of the bride going to the king's house. So much coming together, a beautiful tapestry of redemption right now. And we see that it's going to be completely viable up through the 19th. That's a time period where one can demonstrably prove that, yes, it is a fulfillment of Scripture and the prophecy. But after the 19th, once you start getting into the 20th, the evidence starts dropping off real quick. So we're in a prime time right now, and it should catch our attention that so many celestial signs from a year ago even, and even half a year ago, six months ago, are pointing to right now. And we just finished putting together a new poster. It's a great way to overview and see the celestial tapestry that has been woven over the past year really over a year and a half. This story has been ongoing and is now coming to a close, now wrapping up, now coming to a conclusion. It's the exact same story. And that is what's so amazing about the heavenly story, is what we have seen in the past year and a half is one single story. The story has not stopped. It just keeps growing and growing, and we get a much larger view and understanding of the Lion of the tribe of Judah and who is also our Redeemer. So definitely download that in our Google Drive. It is a poster size, 3 foot by 4 foot, but it's a PDF. You can just open it on your computer. The best way to view it is to right click on it and save it to your device and then view it. And that way you also have a copy too as well. But just scroll around through it, study it, and look at all the text. We're going to give an overview of it right now, but we're not going to read all the text and every single detail that's on it. But before we look at it, I want to give you an update of what is going on in the heavens right now. We talked about we are in the middle of the picture of the bride going out to meet the bridegroom. They are meeting each other at this time. And there's multiple celestial signs demonstrating it and bringing the story back to mind with the celestial anniversaries at this time too as well. We have not been looking at one or two things reminding us of the story. We've seen a whole theater play, in a sense, going on with multiple actors telling the same story. That is what is so amazing. If it was only one or two things, you could chalk it up to coincidence. But when you see multiple actors on the celestial stage working together to tell a complete story, that should catch your attention. And so when we look at the night sky right now, this is showing August 10th from Jerusalem. And Venus is the lower star. It has been growing brighter and brighter every day, and I actually got to see it briefly about two days ago before clouds got in the way, so I couldn't take a picture of it. But Venus is in Leo right now, too, as well. And Jupiter is at the tail end, the hind end of Leo. But both of these two pictures are on the scene at the same time, in the same constellation, at the same time that we see the story of the bride going out to meet the bridegroom. Venus right now pictures the bride. Right now it is technically the evening star. It is not the morning star. It is only the morning star when it's seen in the morning. And right now it's seen primarily in the evening. So that's why it has the title of evening star right now. But you will remember back when we looked at the picture and rehearsal of Purim, that is when 
Venus was shining as the morning star. So we studied that picture and that correlation of how the bride should be shining like her bridegroom. And so here we are, six months later, we have Venus on the scene as the evening star, which reminds us that we, as the bride of Christ, as we go out to meet our bridegroom, we should be striving to shine as bright as the morning star. So Venus went off the scene for a brief time, changed costumes in a sense, came back on the scene, and is reminding us as we go out to meet our bridegroom, we should be striving to be shining bright like him so people can see him in our life. And when we keep that story, that picture in our mind, and then we look at the celestial movements in the sky right now, right in Leo, right in Judah, it also reinforces this picture and rehearses it for us. We are seeing this prophecy being fulfilled literally, visually, in front of us of the bride going out to meet the bridegroom. Visually, we are told to look up. We were told we will see our redemption drawing night. And when we look up, we see an entire celestial play going on right now of the bride going out to meet the bridegroom. And this is from the 10th. And remember, this is the day that the sun changed chambers. So this was the day the announcement went out. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And so on this day, when that announcement went out, you could see in the sky the bride going out to meet the bridegroom. How beautiful. And as we progress through the days, you can see that she's drawing closer and closer to Jupiter. And we're on the 17th right now. And Mercury is in the scene too, just barely. But over the days ahead, and over the past few days, since the announcement has gone out, we've seen these two principal actors, the bride and the bridegroom, drawing closer to each other. How beautiful! Every day when we go out and look at the celestial signs, when we lift up our heads, when we look up, we are reminded the bridegroom cometh right now at this very time, and that we should be shining bright like him. And on the 18th, 19th, and keep drawing closer and closer and closer and closer. And then by the 27th of August, when they are right next to each other, that will picture when the bride is finally with the bridegroom in his chamber. And we make that distinction. That day will picture when the bride is actually with him, but the gathering will happen before that. And we lay that out on the Heavens Declare document. We are expecting the gathering right now. And then there's a few more pictures that the celestial signs in the heavens will rehearse. And then finally show the bride shining bright with the king. The Lion of the Tribe of Judah. And this is what we illustrate on the new poster, the Heavenly Story. So let's walk through it real quickly. Definitely download it right after this. But we have been looking at time as a cyclical concept because it is cyclical, especially when viewed from the celestial signs which determine time, which determine the seasons, and which also show the signs. If you are not watching the celestial signs to know the time, then obviously you're going to miss the signs too as well. So a year and a half ago, back on March 21st, 2015, was the total solar eclipse. And that started off the spiritual year the religious year on the Jewish calendar. And so a lot of people took note that it started with a celestial sign. That caught a lot of people's attention. Especially we also knew that it would end with another total solar eclipse. So we already knew just from this unique sign that last year was very unique. And then just a few days after that was the third blood moon. And so in addition to starting the year off with a total solar eclipse, then another blood moon, and you of course knew there was another one coming, we knew this year was going to have high prophetic significance. And that blood moon was on Passover. And then about two and a half months later, Jupiter entered the constellation Leo by the modern border definitions. So Jupiter is now coming onto the scene and the Shiloh story is starting to be told. And then just a few days after that was the first Star of Bethlehem Echo Reminder. The first one that had been really seen of this closeness in 2,000 years. And that caught our attention. It's also the same day as the American Blood Moon, which definitely got everyone's attention, was even in the news, because we were in between the third actual Blood Moon and the fourth one, and then you throw an extra one into the mix right there. That definitely caught people's attention, but on the exact same night as the Star of Bethlehem. You could see both on the same night. And this was the first official invitation to the wedding, so to speak, that Shiloh, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, was coming again. And that he was going to be gathering his bride. He was going to be gathering his people. 
and he came the first time to be a light to the Gentiles, so that is who he is gathering the first time. So that was the first star of Bethlehem, and then about a month and a half later, Jupiter was by Regulus, and it was starting to actually enter the stars that composed the shape of the lion. And then about a month and a half later was the fourth and final blood moon. And we looked at the symmetry of how all three of these lined up, the three different blood moons, and how the American blood moon and the star Bethlehem was at the average median on that too as well. Very important, and that definitely caught our attention. This is one of the main reasons why I started taking a lot of these celestial notes, seeing how orderly everything was being rehearsed. We didn't know the story then. We don't even pretend to know the whole story now. But we have seen an incredible tapestry of redemption being woven since that time, especially seeing it more as we continue to watch. So that was the fourth and final blood moon. And then about a month after that was the second instance of the Star of Bethlehem. And both these Star of Bethlehem instances definitely caught a lot of attention around the world because you can hardly miss it when you went outside and just looked at the horizon and people just driving home from work noticed it and everything. So both of these got the world's attention. There was no way to hide it. And the symmetry of them too, and especially them reminding us that these star Bethlehems indicated where the king was the first time, drove us to investigate, and eventually it would point us to Purim. And then a few days after that, Jupiter was at the hind star of Jupiter on its way out. Jupiter is the main actor. It is the representation of the scepter, of the lawgiver. And even the Hebrew word for Jupiter means justice which is a beautiful picture of the king who is also the lawgiver, who is also the judge. And the Bible gives several examples of where kings had to act as judges. David heard cases. Solomon heard cases. Even Paul the Apostle took his case to the highest level he could go. He appealed to Caesar. The king was always a judge, too, as well. So both of these, the lawgiver and the scepter, are wrapped up into one single identity, Jupiter. And since the time that Jupiter came onto the scene into Leo and at the first star Bethlehem and at the second star Bethlehem, Venus was considered the evening star then. It was seen at the evening time because that's what the star Bethlehems were. They were the conjunction of Venus and Jupiter seen in the evening. But it was back in January of 2016 we're starting to get into. That's when Venus became the morning star again. It actually dipped off the scene for a little bit, but now it's coming back on the scene as the morning star. So it had changed costumes, and now it was coming onto the scene as the morning star, and it's going to be rehearsing that picture for the next instance when the moon lined up with Jupiter right exactly on Purim, which was exactly the median day that was pointed to by the star of Bethlehem. A beautiful picture of the king with his shining bride on that day too as well, which is directly opposite of where we are right now, with also the picture of the moon shining bright as well. And again, Esther's name means beautiful as the morning star. So this background is rehearsed for us and these connections made because they will come into play later. And then at the beginning of the religious year was the second total solar eclipse ending out the previous year on the religious calendar, the religious year. At this point, you're halfway through the civil year, 5776. But at the same time as the total solar eclipse, Jupiter was right next to the hind foot star and was also at opposition. It was shining the brightest. So it was drawing attention that it was right there, right in the middle of the circle, that it had circled around the hind foot is right at the middle, right at this point, shining the brightest. And that definitely caught our attention, all the celestial lineups that happened right at that exact time. And then just a few days after that, the moon was again with Jupiter right over Passover. And that caught our attention because it was the other bookend to Purim. And Purim is the commemoration of the events that truly happened at the time of Passover. Both Purim and Passover, those times are linked by the Esther picture. She's a picture of the bride at Passover too, which is directly opposite of the Day of Atonement. When Christ came and died for us, he was dying for his bride and paying the atonement, paying the redemption. When he came at Passover, he fulfilled the Day of Atonement too as well. And this is one thing that made Jupiter's instance in Leo this year so unique over the past few decades because this was the first time that it was lining up with very unique symmetry with the actual feast on a celestial calendar. And we lay this out on our Exodus 2 timeline. But then going forward, 
out the middle of the second month, Venus was starting to fade off the scene as the morning star. You really couldn't see it anymore because it was getting into the sun's glare as it was slowly getting lower and lower toward the horizon every single day. So about that time, it was starting to fade off the scene visually as the morning star. But then about a month and a half later, June 6th, it had reached the technical end of being called the morning star. So it was going to go back behind stage, so to speak, and change costumes, and it was going to reemerge in just over a month as the evening star when it start coming onto the scene again. And it'd be hard to spot for a while, but it's getting brighter and brighter and easier to see as it rises slowly above the horizon. And then just a few days after that, when it was really starting to be noticed by different astronomy clubs and everything, just a few days after that was when Jupiter was by the hind foot star. And this is when we were really intently watching and we stayed up late that night and were intently watching because we had great expectation within our limited understanding. We knew a lot had drawn our attention to that time, so we knew we were directed there on purpose. And then in the days after that, we refined and dug deeper and got a deeper understanding of the concepts. It is a lion. We learned more about the conceptual view and how that was viewed on different charts and got a broader understanding of the constellation and the picture being shown. And that brought us to just a few days ago, back on the 10th, when we were looking at when Jupiter reached the astronomical modern border. And there's two constraints in the Shiloh prophecy, and we were focused on one at that time, really to the exclusion of the other, the hind foot. We were focused on when will it leave Judah, when will it leave Leo. And so we were watching that day, and we are seeing in hindsight that all these stops along the way were important. We did need to stop there because we needed to dig and learn a little bit more. And that is the amazing thing to see. As long as we don't quit, as long as we keep going forward, the picture gets better and better. And on that day, which was the 10th, that was when the sun was also entering the technical border of Leo 2 as well. And so that's what triggered the bridegroom coming out of his chamber picture was on that exact same day. We had disappointment on that day for just a little bit, a day or two, until we realized how significant that day was. On the same day that Jupiter was reaching the one end of it, the sun was entering on the other side. Picture of him coming out of his chamber. And at the same time that Venus was definitely shining in Leo 2 as well, as it was moving forward to meet up with Jupiter. All of this seen on the same day. The sun would have been seen earlier in the day in Leo, but right at sunset, Jupiter and Venus would have been seen right there in Leo. And then go forward a few days to the full moon, where we are right now. Right when we are direct opposite the picture of Purim and Esther, and what was rehearsed back then of the bride with the king, the queen going to the king's house, the one who was as beautiful as the morning star. All these pictures are coming together and making an incredible story in the heavens. And we're at the median average anniversary year of the Star Bethlehems. So we've had a year to purify ourselves and prepare ourselves since the first average announcement went out. And reminding us of the Esther pattern and the steps that she went through. And we rehearse all that in our Exodus 2 booklet. So we are at an important time right now. So as this anniversary wraps up, we are expecting the very next step then is to go to the king's house. And we can tell by the celestial charts and what we've been looking at with the constraints of the Shiloh prophecy that it is expected within just a very few next days. And we see the green zone of where this prophecy is still strongly, demonstrably in play of Jupiter still being in the hind foot. There's no doubt about that. But then going beyond that, once you start getting into the 20th, it starts dropping off with the certainty and being able to make a case for it. And so that's kind of a gray zone between the two constellations, Virgo and Leo, and also between the concepts of either of them too as well. But then by the 26th, Jupiter will definitely be within the stars of Virgo. So we see this story being wrapped up right now where we are right now in this green zone because the prophecy does say that Shiloh, the Lion of the tribe of Judah is going to gather his people and the scepter is not going to depart from Judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet. It's going to happen within this green zone area while Jupiter is still demonstrably in the Lion constellation, the Lion concept. And somewhere between when we know it's in Virgo and when we know it's in the hind foot still, there is a conceptual border around there somewhere. We'll pick the median between the two at the moment. 
And somewhere around there, it's going to picture entering the next chamber. So then on the 27th of August, when Jupiter and Venus finally meet up visually in the sky and form the third star Bethlehem, that is going to signify that the queen, the bride who is shining bright, is now finally with her king, her bridegroom, her beloved. And just a few days after that, when the new moon is expected to be sighted on September 2nd, which will start 5777 on a technical level, that day is also when Jupiter finally slips below the horizon. Jupiter is going to be exiting the stage on September 2nd. On a technical level, we talked about how at the Star Bethlehem, which is August 27th, you're just going to see both of them together for a few fleeting minutes. And if you ever tried to take a picture of a sunset, you realize that the celestial bodies, when you try to take a picture of them, move a whole lot faster than you think. And so Jupiter is effectively going to be off stage, leaving the stage right before the Feast of Trumpets. We are expecting the Shiloh prophecy as it relates to the gathering of the Gentiles to wrap up before the Feast of Trumpets. And we find ourselves in a time right now that's being pointed to and everything coming together where we are right now. Everything is right on track. And so we have high expectation. Ephesians 1.13 After that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption, the pickup, of the purchased possession. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. We have seen this story rehearsed of the trumpet call at midnight. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. The bridegroom is already presently, in a sense, on his way. We must trim our lamps. We must make sure we are ready. We make sure that we are shining bright right now as we go out to meet him with our heart and life right now. And then we expect to meet up with the bridegroom halfway in the clouds between the heaven and the earth. We will meet him physically halfway between the two somewhere around here. And then we will go with him into the chamber and the door will be shut. And then the picture will be rehearsed of the queen with the king, the lion of the tribe of Judah with his shining bride. And this is what is rehearsed in Revelation chapter 5, where the Lion of the tribe of Judah is praised by those he has redeemed. So we have a beautiful heavenly story coming together right now, declared by the heavens. Coming together right now, being rehearsed for us. We have been shown the different actors. We have studied the background. We have studied the shadows and patterns. We see them rehearsed in the skies even right now, the bride going out to meet the bridegroom. Sometime soon. We know he is around here somewhere. We are rising up. We are going out to meet him with our heart and life. So definitely download the Heavenly Story poster. Study the different scripture passages that go with it and the other material we have on there too as well. And definitely download the Be Ye Ready Guide because Christ told us that we should be ready. This is a command of Christ. Be ye ready. He wants us to be ready. He wants us to be living as though he is returning. And as we talk about in the guide, this has nothing to do with our salvation. But it is how we show our love and our gratitude for all that our Redeemer has done for us. Definitely rehearse and review the Purify and Sanctify sheets. And definitely look at what Christ is looking to find in our life. This is the oil that is in our lamp. This is how we shine. It's what is seen in our life. And Christ tells us in his word what we should have in our life, what we shouldn't have in our life. And so right now is the time when we check our lamp, we check our oil. What is seen in my life? What is Christ going to see in my life when he returns? And we purify, we wash, we remove, we trim off, we cast off, we burn. But then we also perfume our life and we put on the fruits of the spirit and foster what should be there. What Christ is looking to see in our life. This is illustrated throughout scripture of it has nothing to do with our salvation. But it does show our gratitude for the one who has already washed us. Now is the time when we check our lamp. We have heard the trumpet call at midnight. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye, help to meet him. Be sober, be vigilant, be ye ready, and serve Christ first and highest above all else. Maranatha.